Now for today's video, well, it is definitely a sad one. I'm scared about it because my 13-year-old Yorkie went missing. She vanished into thin air. Bella! Bella! What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you are having just an absolutely amazing day. Now for today's video, well, it is definitely a sad one. I'm scared about it because my 13-year-old Yorkie went missing. She vanished into thin air and well, I don't want to get into too many details. I want to take all of you along for today's journey. It's very scary thinking that my dog is missing. She's gone. If you want to see what happens with the dog, if we find her, well, you're going to have to stick along for today's video to see what happens. But before we actually hop into today's missing dog video, well, I've had everyone asking me, how are the baby iguanas doing? Are they eating? How are they doing? Well, guys, we're going to head into the garage right now, and I'm going to show all of you how they're doing. I'm in the garage now, and well, it is time to put the new baby rock iguanas that just emerge out of their eggs into their new homes. Now, I created some new tubs right here. As you can see, I created some bins that I'm going to actually raise the animals up in for now. When they're ready to go to new homes, they will. But I designed these bins right here so I could have the bins both inside and out. So these bins right here are the plain husky big black 45 gallon tote bins that you'd buy at Home Depot. And what's really cool about these bins is they're actually on wheels so I can move them around. Now, as you can see, the lizards are gonna have just an awesome amount of space right in here. So we've got some plants for them to hide in, some cork bark, food, water, as well as this turtle shell. Now, this turtle shell right here is actually one that I found out in the Everglades one night. The turtle had died, I found the shell, decided to bring it in. So the reason why I put this shell in here is, at nighttime, they'll be able to crawl up inside the shell to sleep, and then during the day, they're gonna have the heat lamp right here, and this is essentially gonna act as a hot rock for the lizards that they can lay on and bask in the sun. So this is it with the lid off, and this is it with the lid on. So this setup right here is the same exact thing, just slightly different on the inside. So we've got a nice big ceramic hide, food, and water. And this bin right here is perfect because at nighttime, if they're outside, I can latch it shut. And well, I will not have to worry about predators coming and eating the lizards. Now, I've never tried this before, so it's going to be pretty cool to actually see how it works out in the long run. But without further ado, let's put the new lizards in. So we're going to put the Cuban rock iguanas inside of this very first tote right here. So these right here are the Lewis Eye hybrids. We're going to slide them on down, and we've got our Cubans right here. So it's been about five days now since the Cuban iguanas came out of the incubator, and they're just a naturally calm iguana. This, I believe, is one of the first ones to come out of the incubator. And since he was one of the first ones, he's going to be one of the first ones to be introduced into his new home. So I'm just going to take this guy right here. We're going to take one we're gonna take a second we're gonna put them on in just like this and as you can see that this is plenty of room for them now that these guys are actually rock iguanas they're terrestrial iguanas they really don't climb up so that's why there doesn't need to be you know a whole lot of branches for them but we're just gonna stick these little iguanas in here this is just absolutely amazing for these little iguanas right here I mean look at this and I also gave these vents right here the reason why I put the vents in here as well that is going to allow for good airflow to come in this is a big bin if we only left the top exposed well all this heat is going to collect in there so I wanted to give them a little bit of a viewing window as well as a nice way for air to flow in and out would you look at that the little baby Cubans are doing exactly what I thought they do they came right over here to the turtle shell they're hanging out on top they're here and yeah we're gonna have oh whoa 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 buddy you can't hop out whoa 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 what are you doing little guy the Cuban iguanas are in there well let's let's take this lid from this bin right here we're gonna take this lid right here and we're just gonna slide it right on top you know before we have some escapee iguanas now as you guys can see the rock iguanas are settling in very nicely to their enclosure they're using the shell like just as I thought that they would to bass and now it is finally time to add the Lewis eye hybrids to their enclosure. Now these guys are fairly chilled out right now, as you can see, I mean, just look at this guys. I have an entire handful of Lewis Eye hybrid iguanas right here. I mean, look at these, these are baby dinosaurs in the making, it's so cool, and I'm so glad that I could bring all of you along on the journey from the moment the eggs were laid to the moment they hatched. You guys have seen it all, and now it is time to put them inside of their new little home right here. We're just gonna stick them on in. They're gonna absolutely love this enclosure right here. Look at them right under the hide. Now we're just gonna add the rest. Now we're gonna add these little guys fairly quickly, well, because we don't want them to hop on out. So we're just gonna add them in right here. They're loving their new enclosures. I'm loving it. Look at these little guys. So we got these little guys right inside of their enclosure. Wait, wait, give me that food right there. We've got them in, and of course, 
we have to add our lid. So for those of you that maybe want to convert an enclosure like this, you can see what we did here. We actually cut out the mesh. We put the mesh on the inside. We put the zip tie heads on the inside. So the front of the lid looks nice and clean. And we're just going to add it on right now. Look at that. And of course we have to add our heat. Would you look at that? We have all of the iguana set up inside of their new homes. Now, as you can see, we have the main basking area here, just adjacent to these bulbs. We're gonna add the UVB bulbs. And of course we left this here. The reason why we didn't do full screen is we wanted to give them some shade. When I put these tubs outside, these animals are actually going to need to be able to get inside of the shade if they need to get away from the sun. So that is why I left half of it covered and half of it screen. So now that these little guys are set up and doing well, well, it is finally time to hop into today's video where my dog is missing. Guys, 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 this is not good. I've just been here in the yard looking around and inside of the house and I think my Yorkie got out. My mom let her out here about 30 minutes ago and she hasn't been let back inside the house and my mom left, called me, told me to find her and I've searched the entire yard and well, I think she got out. I think she's missing. And this is not good at all, guys, considering she's a 13-year-old Yorkie dog. Oh, hi, Milo. She's 13 years old, and she has cataracts. Now, for those of you that don't know what cataracts are, cataracts is when a dog's eyes become cloudy, and they can't see very well. Not only can she not see very well, but she is missing. I'm almost positive, guys. We're going to have to search the yard. I have not searched the backyard yet she might be hiding somewhere so we're gonna search around and, and, and hopefully we'll find her so the first place that I want to check is back in here in the shade and nope there's no dog there now this dog normally is not out in the yard she normally stays on the patio so this is very very strange and very concerning for me um, my mom knows my mom is on the way back so we can start searching for her but I don't think she's back here at all this is not good at all we're probably gonna have to start looking around the neighborhood because this is just not good at all. We gotta search around and hopefully we'll find her. Bella! Bella! This is my oldest dog that I have. I've had this dog since I was 10 years old. She's very old and I hear stories about missing dogs all the time, but when it happens to you, it's just very, very scary. Bella! Bella! Yeah, guys, she's not answering. Joe, Joe, have you seen her? Maybe old man Joe has seen her. Can you show us where Bella is? Oh my gosh, guys. This is it. She had to have escaped from here. Normally right here, these bricks are here. And well, our yard men were here just a couple of days ago and they must have moved the bricks when they came in. But as you can see, there's a very large gap and this Yorkie could fit right out of here. We put this here to cover the gap and no one is supposed to touch these bricks right here. So I swear it is something every single day here. Whether it's iguanas being hatched, tortoises eggs being laid, a dog's escaping. It's never a dull day here, but this is one of those things that I just am, am I'm freaking out about. I, I do not want anything to happen to her. She's never been out loose before. She's lived her life completely indoors. So I am almost 100% certain that this right here is where she got out well. We're gonna go inside right now. We're gonna make some missing dog signs. We're gonna go in the truck. We're gonna look around the neighborhood and post some signs up. And of course we have to put these bricks back because well, we cannot have any other dogs get out and we cannot have anything else get in. All right guys, we're in Microsoft Word right now and I am making our lost dog sign. So he says lost dog, that's a picture that I actually took of her just a couple of days ago laying down on the dog bed. Now I haven't put my phone number there is because when I put the sign up, that's when I'm gonna actually write my phone number in with Sharpie because well, I don't want my phone number leaked on the internet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna come on here right now we're gonna go right here to file print and we're going to make 10 copies right here and we're going to print them the printer is working we're printing out our lost dog signs now let's take a look let's see how they are I'm hoping it's in color yeah look at that right there we've got the dog signs they're coming in hot they're looking good look at that we've got the dog signs looking good Would you look at that right here? We have got our signs right here. As you can see, we've got 10 beautiful signs right here. So what I'm going to do now that we have our dog signs as well, I'm gonna go hop in the truck. We're gonna cruise the neighborhood, see if we can find her and put our signs up. 
one hour later. So we're in the car now, and well, we've been driving around. We've been searching for about 15 minutes for Bella the Yorkie. Now, the reason why I'm so concerned about this is because she is partially blind and she has cataracts. So if she's out here running around, number one, if she somehow can ma navigate herself back to the house, well, it's gonna be quite hard to do because she can't see very well. That's number one. And number two, if she's here out and there's a car around, she can hear fine, but she can't see well. So she could potentially get hit by a car which would not be good at all. So we're gonna keep cruising around probably for another 20 minutes. And then if we do not find her well, we're gonna put signs up all around the neighborhood and hopefully then someone will find her. We are out here now. We've been searching. We searched for another 20 minutes. We have yet to see her. So it's time to start putting signs up because my fears are coming true that we're not gonna find her today. So we have our dog sign right here. We've got our tape. So to get started, we're literally just gonna take this right here. We're gonna take some tape just like this. We're gonna take the tape, we're gonna put a strip just right here on the top. We're gonna put it halfway on the top, and then we're gonna take another tape strip, and we're going to put it right here. Now we're gonna take our sign just like this. We're gonna put the sign up just like that, and right there. So we have our dog sign right up here. The sign is up, and now that the sign is up, well, we've got sign number one up. I've got my Sharpie, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hop off. I'm gonna write my number down because, well, yeah, I can't leak my number on the internet. And that is it. We have our first dog sign up. I've completely signed it with my phone number on there. And well, we're going to leave the sign up and hopefully then someone will find Bella. Now that we have sign number one up, I'm going right now to a nearby dog park. This dog park is about two miles from my house. And we walk Bella there, you know, about four to five times a week. So maybe she wandered her way over there. And if she didn't, at least there's other dog owners there that may have seen her. So if we put signs over at that park where other dog owners are, I mean, those people that have dogs are certainly going to call if they see a missing Yorkie. So we're going to head over to that dog park right now and see maybe Maybe if Bella is there. All right, we have arrived here at the dog park. Now, when we first pulled up, there's actually some people having a picnic right over there. A little boy and his parents, his grandma. So I immediately went right over to them and I actually went and I asked them if they've seen a little dog. They have not seen a little dog. I asked them if they would be on camera. They didn't want to be on camera. So I just went over there and asked them myself. Now, as you can see, we have a dog park here. Use, there's all kinds of stuff for your dogs. You have poop bags and all kinds of stuff. So. I'm, I'm not seeing Bella here, it's a wide open park and well, it's very, very hot. It's in the middle of the day right now and I really don't think Bella's gonna be walking around just because of how hot it is outside. She could overheat very quickly so she's most likely underneath someone's car or already in the care of someone inside of their house that's found her. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head over to that stop sign right here at the corner of the park and put up sign number two. Now we're gonna put a sign on this side as well as this side. The reason being is this is a very busy intersection right here. So we want people at all angles to be able to see the sign. So we're gonna put one here and on there. So we're gonna start right here. Um, I'm probably just gonna put it over this citizen sign. Actually, that could be illegal to do. No, so. no, no. It's time to put our sign up. It's windy. Our signs are blowing away. Oh my gosh, look at that. We've got our tape. We're gonna put the tape right there and we're going to get another piece of tape right here. We're gonna put the tape just like this. We have got our tape just like this. And as you can see, we've got one more sign ready to go. So we're gonna put this right here on this area here. Now this sign right here is a little bit warped. You can't see it that well, but anyone that's seen a lost dog or knows of a lost dog, if they see the sign, they're gonna pull over and come look at it. So it doesn't have to be totally perfect and flat. We've got our first sign here and now it's time to do the other sign on the back. One minute, 37 seconds later. As you can see, we are just down the street from the dog park, and look here. We are at a main busy highway. Cars are flying back and forth, and my dog is blind, so if she were to come here, there's a good chance she, she could get hit by a car. So guys, stop what you're doing and go comment down below a little prayer. I mean, look how fast cars are flying down the road. Look at this car right there and that one there. I mean, this is absolutely insane to think that my dog could be in the crossfire of these cars racing down the street. So we're gonna put a sign right up here. We're gonna put the sign just here. We're gonna go just like this. There's already nails, so we're gonna put this. Oh no, we just ripped the sign. Okay, well, we can repair the sign. We've got tape. We're gonna tape the sign just like that right there. And that, my friends, is going to end today's episode. I hope all of you did enjoy watching today's video. Today's video is 
kind of crazy considering my dog is missing. We did all we could. We searched around for about two hours and we put signs up all over the neighborhood. So guys, make sure you go comment down below a prayer for her safe return home. I'm hoping that she'll be returned today. Obviously, the sooner, the better. The longer a dog goes missing, the greater chance it is that the dog could sadly be attacked by other dogs. It could die from heat exhaustion. There's just many factors that play into this. So I'm hoping she will be returned very soon. Guys, make sure you go right now. If it is your first time on the channel and you came here and you want to see what happens with Bella obviously we're going to be doing update videos when we find more stuff out if we get a call back so guys make sure you go right now if you have not already make sure you go hit that subscribe button and tap that little notification bell and you all will be notified whenever I post